Hi everybody, this is Jeff. This is just a quick video demonstrating uh, my old uh, TI Voyage 200 calculator and a Commodore 64, uh, both communicating with a pair of I.O. boards on an I squared C bus. So this adventure began a few weeks ago when I dug out my old Voyage 200 and got to looking around at what was still available on the internet for it and I found TICalc.org and looked around and that was pretty interesting and on there they have TIGCC which is a C compiler for this calculator and the thing I found really interesting and I guess I just never realized before was that this calculator uses a Motorola 68K processor which you know, not that many years ago, at least to me, it seems like that was a, you know, considered a pretty powerful processor, you know, back in the day. So uh, at any rate, I downloaded all this and got it working and wrote some simple test programs. And I realized that somebody had written kind of a stub for using the TI link port uh, to control I squared C devices. So I looked into I squared C a little more and, uh, found out there was some uh, pretty good pseudocode on Wikipedia uh, which I downloaded and fiddled around and got a uh, working system on the Voyage 200. Oh, the other thing that's nice there is a, a TIEMU that you can download and download the ROM for your calculator and it will emulate your calculator which makes it nice with uh, using TIGCC you can build your project and squirt it over to the emulator automatically and test it. You can't really test the the link port stuff the way I'm using it, but you know you can test that you know all your user interface and things like that are are working as you think they should. So at any rate, um, this is just a little main function that does the user interface and there is another file which is the actual i squared c driver and this is handled like a pseudo object um and that you create a, a structure this is actually a um, the i squared c is a structure and you create that and you can you know initialize it uh, there's another structure which describes all the settings for the I.O. board which is based on the PCA 9596 uh, I2C I.O. port chip which gives you five 8-bit ports um, and then you pass the chip driver the I2C bus to use and then you can talk to it doing stuff like uh, configure you know board 0 configure board 1 that type of thing so sort of like doing objects in C, you know, not like real object oriented programming, but it's nice. And it, it worked out really good. We'll have some video showing that uh, running here uh, next. Okay, here's where I started a few weeks ago. I dug out my old TI Voyage 200 calculator and to play with it and realized that it had Motorola 68K processor, which surprised me. I don't know why it never occurred to me before. And then I got to looking around the web and found that there was a C compiler for it called TIGCC, which I downloaded and got running. And also found that somebody had done a start of an I squared C driver using the link port which I thought was interesting and it turns out the link port on the TI is just about ideal for I squared C so I combined with what I found out from that code with some code from uh, Wikipedia on I squared C and wrote this little program here for the Voyage 200 so we'll go and we'll configure my IO boards okay and these are the IO boards it's just two boards I had laying around that speak I squared C and each have uh, five 8-bit ports 
and now we're going to do an output test and we're going to toggle board 0 port 0 which is F1 so right now pin 0 on that port is off 0 volts on 5 volts off 0 volts so then the next thing I got to think is hey I wonder if I could do this on the Commodore 64 so after getting the uh, I squared C working on the Voyage 200, I thought, you know, hey, I could do, th do this uh, also on the Commodore 64. Uh, earlier this past year, 2017, uh, I found there was a C compiler for the old 8-bit systems, including the VIC-20, Commodore 64, um, PETs, Apple IIs, Ataris, that type of thing, Nintendo. Um, so you can see there's a whole list right here. So anyhow, uh, I had played with CC65 uh, several months ago. So I updated that and uh, I have it integrated with Visual Studio, which is a nice IDE. And I ported over the I squared C driver that uh, I wrote for the Voyage 200 and the driver for the PCA9596 and had to change a few things um, due to the way the CC65 is not really C99 compliant uh, so like this part of the code right here where it sets up the configuration looks a bit ugly or it accomplishes the same thing so um, also CC65 doesn't understand booleans I had to change all the booleans that were returned or passed to unsigned chars which is not a big deal anyhow so did that compiled it used uh, WinVice uh, to kind of test the user interface again couldn't really use it for the IO uh, in this case um, I used the user port on the Commodore 64 the first four bits of that uh, two bits are input, two bits are output. They are physically wired together so that um, you have one input and one output tied together uh, through a diode so that the output can't drive the line high. It can only pull it low. And that final line after they're tied together is pulled up to five volts through a 10K resistor. So this gives us our um, output line configuration that I squared C expects. It uses a uh, open collector uh, line that's pulled up to five volts and uh, all the devices on the bus pull that line low to talk to it. It has a data line like that and a clock line. Okay, so um, after doing that, wired that up, uh, got it working just a little bit ago. I was pretty excited for some reason to be able to toggle bits on my I squared CIO boards through the Commodore 64. Uh, there's still a lot of things in the Commodore 64 version of this code that I need to clean up. Uh, it's not handling all the the acts and knacks that are returned from the boards properly, so I have to get that fixed up. But coming up right now, I will show it running on the Commodore 64. Okay, so here we have the Commodore 64 set up to talk to I squared C devices. So, this is a mess, but we'll get around looking at everything. So we have Commodore 64 C, uh, Phoenix CPS 10 power supply, which you saw in a video uh, a few weeks ago, using an old uh, Samsung monitor slash TV per monitor through a little VGA converter which works fine. Um, to get the back of things here so uh, this is for the SD to IEC for loading programs off the SD card. This is the user port um, I've got wired in here to use the first four bits, two as inputs, two as outputs, 
and used a couple feet of uh, RG5 cable because I had it on hand. And this little black board here, let's see if I can get that wire out of the way there a bit. This just has a few resistors, 10K resistors, um, and a couple diodes. And what this board does is pull up the inputs and um, the diodes keep the outputs uh, from sourcing any current. It only sync current. So here is the basic idea there. This is how that's wired. So this kind of duplicates the uh, way the I squared C bus sh uh, should be. And, and we have a couple uh, I squared C IO boards, each which have five uh, 8 bit ports, which should be configured as uh, each pin can be configured as input or output. Uh, to monitor everything during development, I used this Sailey Logic. Uh, logic probe and the software and developed the code on CC65 so writing C for the Commodore 64 so if I press start here and then we'll send configure to the boards and we can see down here that we can see all the data that was sent and I can click on one of these and it will zoom into that part of the signal. So uh, this logic probe software decodes I squared C automatically so it made this a lot easier to check things out. And up here we see I just did the A configure and it configured OK. And um, if we do an output test, B and I'm going to press A here to toggle port 0 or board 0, port 0 just toggles the bits on and off and you can see now on bit 0 we have 5 volts now we have 0 volts now we have 5 volts now we have 0 volts and that's the Commodore 64 talking on an I squared C bus so that's it. Uh, I hope some people find that interesting. If you'd like more information about anything or everything, just let me know in the comments below. I hope everyone's had a good 2017 and happy 2018. Hopefully there'll be uh, many more videos to come on Commodore 64s and other nerdy stuff. Everybody take care. Bye.